One of the most important and exciting parts of starting any knitting project has to be selecting the colour. The perfect mixture of shade, texture and pattern can really make or break a project and allow you to create a truly unique wardrobe. However, with all the shades in the world to pick from, I do occasionally find myself slightly overwhelmed when it comes to selecting the perfect palette. With this in mind, I wanted to sit down and share with you some of my ideas for the palette for my autumn wardrobe. I'm not normally someone who is so formal and structured when it comes to planning my yarn choices, and I do tend to go with a more intuitive approach of just turning up at a yarn shop and seeing how I feel. However, I have noticed that I tend to gravitate towards certain items in my wardrobe that fit a very specific sort of colour scheme. So I'm hoping I can really narrow down what my favourite colours are and start planning my wardrobe in a more mindful and timeless way. The very core of my autumn palette consists of four key neutral colours. I use the word neutral here to more mean base colours that I can build off of for the rest of my wardrobe. Now the two accent colours are selected to give a little pop to my outfit so it's not all neutrals and they should pair well with any of the other four core neutral colours. In this way I'm hoping that my handmade additions will blend really well with what I've already got and will match and look quite chic with almost anything. As I'm a planner, I really love to create mood boards. Now many of you will know that one of the best places to do this is of course Pinterest, so Pinterest was a vital part of my planning process when I was trying to see how these colours would pair well together, if they would all be complementary, and if I liked the overall vibe and feel of the palette that I had selected. Another source of inspiration, well a very loose source of inspiration, is the colour analysis technique. Now, I have never had professional colour analysis, but I would really like to at some point because I find it quite interesting. It's by no means a scientific practice, but it aims to match the best colours to you based on your natural features like your hair and eye colour and your skin tone. As my hair is a very dark, almost brown blonde, I'm quite fair, but I can wear gold or silver jewellery and my eyes are sort of a hazel green. I feel like I kind of gravitate towards more autumnal colours, but softer autumnal colours rather than the very deep and vibrant oranges. Please do let me know if you think that I am a soft autumn. I have never had it done professionally, as I said, but I do find it really fun to look at all of the colour schemes and try and pinpoint what would suit me well. If you or anyone you know have had colour analysis done, I would be really curious to hear about your experience. I think that it just sounds like a really fun way to have a look at what different colours might suit you and might really bring out different aspects of what you've already got. And if you're interested in colour analysis, there are some very cool creators here on YouTube that I highly recommend you search and check out. There's also this really useful website that I've come across, which I will link down below, which sort of breakdowns all of the different charts and all of the different seasons. Now my four core colours are navy blue, natural cream, charcoal grey and camel brown. My two accent colours are vintage blue and oxblood red. Having paired balls of all of these colours from my stash together, I'm fairly confident that they all integrate into a very interesting, warm and cosy palette for autumn. The first of my core colours is navy blue, and I feel like my love of navy doesn't need that much of an explanation. As many of you will know if you've been around for a while, I really like blues and navy in particular I find is such a beautiful colour to knit with. It's just a little bit lighter and a little bit more interesting than black so I do find it a bit easier to knit with because black can really make you feel like you can't see any of your stitches. And I also think that navy pairs really well with the colour of my hair and it really brings out my eyes. When I think of navy, I immediately think of Breton tops, stripes and textured rich tweed. And tweed is exactly what inspired my selection of this beautiful yarn from Lanar in Milan. I got this the other day because I fell in love as soon as I saw it. 
This rich and beautiful shade is complemented so well by the little flecks of camel that run through it and I really like how soft and beautiful this is to the touch because of the fact that it's a blend of alpaca and wool. I do have quite a bit of navy already in my wardrobe because I love it so much but I have noticed that I have more summer navy items so I'm really looking forward to knitting something thicker and warmer in navy for the autumn. And for this beautiful tweed yarn, I have been thinking about making something classic but maybe oversized or a little bit menswear inspired. I think that that would really bring out the quality and the texture of this yarn. Our second colour is Natural Cream. Now I called it Natural Cream because this is an off-white shade that I've noticed many yarn brands often refer to as natural or undyed. This colour immediately makes me think of fine detailed lace or really lovely cosy cables. It brings out the look of almost any textured knit. Um, I don't know what it is about cream, it's just it helps you see all of your stitches and it helps you create an effect which just makes any sort of texture much more dramatic. I also like how this shade of cream is very sort of delicate and feminine, but there is something warm and cosy about it because it has a little bit more yellow in it than a really bright snow white. At the moment, I'm working on this very beautiful Kimberly sweater by a extremely talented French designer that I will link down below. And this works so well in this white, I think, because it's such a subtle and pretty lacy cable design that runs all the way through the entire body of the sweater. I'm knitting this up in this lovely pairing of silk mohair and extra fine merino from Hobby's Friends range, which was kindly gifted to me. And I'm really looking forward to adding a jumper that feels like a blank canvas on which I can add some of my other autumnal colours. Another recent piece that I knit up in this natural cream hue is this teddy clutch, which is a pattern by Petite Knit. I also made a matching cream lining with some lovely floral details that I think really speaks to how feminine and dainty this natural cream shade can be. This shade of cloud boucle yarn from We Are Knitters is also funnily enough called natural. And isn't it just the perfect choice for such a fuzzy and textured yarn? I do find cream works really well for textured projects because it creates an extra layer of cloud-like halo. Now we're moving on to my third core colour, which is charcoal grey. Now grey is probably a colour that I have knit the most with out of all. I even designed my Claudia sweater in grey, but that was quite a bit lighter than the grey that I have in mind for this autumn. Although grey is not traditionally thought of as an autumnal or warm colour, I do think that the deeper shades of charcoal can bring a little bit of warmth to what is traditionally a very cool shade. I enjoy knitting with grey because I think it's really, really timeless. It complements a lot of the other colours I like, like camel and navy, and it also just works really well to highlight texture, just as cream does. I particularly love deep shades of grey, just like this cashmere that I also got from Lanar, because I think that they have a lot of character, and I enjoy a sort of mild effect to my grey yarns, because again, I think that that helps really bring out your stitches. Similarly to the navy, I think that grey could work really well for oversized, comfortable and menswear inspired sweaters that just have a really clean finish. However, I also think that grey kind of is an in-between shade which would allow you to still play with texture and different patterns and maybe some cabling. One of the most iconic pieces that I've made in grey is obviously this really beautiful Moby sweater, also by Petite Knit. But I have, as I said, designed my Claudia sweater and my Claudia gloves in grey because I just love it so much. Now we move on to our fourth and final core shade and that is Camel Brown. Camel Brown was a no-brainer choice for me. I have a really thick and beautiful soft mohair camel coat that I wear throughout the whole winter that really is just the warmest thing. And I also particularly love that specific sort of trench coat shade of beige camely brown. The colour camel really speaks to me of a paired back timeless elegance, which is very warm, inviting and cosy. 
Brands that use a lot of camel that I really admire include the Italian brand Max Mara, who is just an absolute master at integrating camel into everything they do. I also enjoy the fact that camel works well for tweeds because it creates a warm and cozy base on which to add other colours, but it also looks really really great when you use it with a mohair. The camel yarns in my sash that I'm really looking forward to use include another addition from Lanar, which is this beautiful baby alpaca and this pretty larger quality of slightly more brown drops lima, both of which I think will be the perfect choices for making something very elegant and timeless that also pair with my other core cool colours. Now we've gone through my basic base colours, I want to introduce you to my two sort of pops of character and fun. And these are Vintage Blue and Oxblood Red. I called this shade Vintage Blue because it made me think of faded old jeans or very crisp sort of summer cotton shirts. The perfect example of this colour is this pairing from Knitting for Olive which is called Dusty Dove Blue. Although Vintage Blue is naturally cool because of course it is a shade of blue, I think the fact that it's a little bit more muted and toned down will mean it will pair much better with some of the warmer neutrals I've selected. I'm currently using this Dusty Dove Blue from Knitting for Olive to make a Whitmore cardigan that you might have seen in a previous episode, and I'm really happy with the way that this is turning out. I also noticed that brands that I really admire, like Cezanne, have done some of their most classic pieces in this sort of vintage blue shade. I find it to be characterful and a little bit more interesting, but not too vibrant that it would overpower some of the other colours I've selected. As this is an accent shade, I definitely selected this colour with the idea of making lacy or statement pieces of knitwear, just like my Whitmore cardigan. But I think it would be equally good knit up in something classic and paired back that would just add a little pop of colour to a minimalist and timeless outfit. Another brand that has inspired me for my selection of this vintage blue shade is of course Ralph Lauren. You'll see this in their cotton shirts, but also in their slightly more interesting and quirky pieces, like this puffy quilted jacket. Now let's move on to our final shade and my second accent colour, and that is Oxblood Red. I selected Oxblood Red because I wanted to add some drama to what was otherwise quite a casual and timeless palette. I think that burgundies look really really good for the evening, I think that they are a little bit more interesting than black sometimes, but they still can really make the shade of my hair pop and they go very well with the fact that my eyes are green. The yarn that I'm showing you in red is this beautiful cashmere that my mum got me for my birthday that I've been trying to decide what to make with. I have a good quantity of it, but I want to make sure that I make exactly the right thing with such a special and pretty yarn. For this shade of red, I think that the Tonight top could be a really great option because that would work very well for the evening and it would look very seamless and pretty. It would also be lovely and soft against the skin. Oxblood Red, just like my other accent colour, pairs very well with some of the other neutral base colours I've selected, as I'll show you here. I think it really sings with camel, but it also looks good with navy for something sort of very deep and almost jewel toned. Of course, another item of clothing that I made that features this lovely shade of red is this top which I created in my beginner sewing video. I was completely new to sewing when I made this, but I'm really happy with the way that it turned out and if you're interested in seeing the process behind that, then do check that video out. Now we've been through all of my autumnal colours, I will mix and match them so that you can see what they look like paired together. I really love this mix of colours because I'm hoping that it will allow me to more seamlessly transition from my summer wardrobe, which would feature things like creams and light blues, to my more wintry wardrobe with my thick camel coat. I've got my fingers crossed that these colours will all pair really well together whilst also complementing the natural colour of my hair and my eyes. If you're thinking about putting together your own autumn colour palette, do let me know what sort of colours you're thinking of and let me know what you think about my selection. Maybe there's ones that you reckon I should swap out for something else, you never know. <laughs> 
As always, the best way to get in touch with me is to drop me a comment down below or head over to my Instagram where you will see some of my colour ideas already coming into fruition. I'm wishing you a wonderful October and a very happy autumn. Bye!